how to pay off your mortgage in five years five years five. That, that's today's show let's dive in Hey everybody, welcome into the Investing in Real Estate show. I'm Clayton Morris. I'm Natalie Morris. And this is the show where we focus on buy and hold real estate for the purposes of creating you know, passive income and legacy wealth for you and your family. The vehicle that we use is real estate investing and we wanna hold it for the rest of our lives. So we have a very special announcement on today's show. Um, it's something that Natalie and I have been working on for uh, the past number of months. And we have a new yeah. book, so we wanted to kind of share that and di deep dive that today on the show. Right. So uh, Clayton came up with this idea recently, which uh, most ideas in our house are actually his. He's the idea guy. I'm the execution person. Now you said recently. I think I t we kind of talked about this strategy for many many years. Well, we've we've talked about it on the podcast and you know and different writings that I've done and and things that you've done. Um, but we always have a lot of questions about it. And so we decided to just really lay it out in a sort of for dummies format uh, so that anyone who has a question, we can just point them towards the book because this is a strategy that we have employed with great effect, which is just something that, again, that we talk about all the time here is choosing the best financial product for your money. So we found a way to take the biggest elephant in the room, I guess we could call it, which is the mortgage, and replace that with more favorable financial products so that we chip away at that mortgage and eventually you live mortgage-free. Right, so that's the idea. So we decided that once we, we've done this now a couple of times where we've put this strategy into place, um, I uh, w jointly, because I did it a, a number of years ago when I lived in Philadelphia on a condominium that I owned, which I was able to pay off huge chunks of it by using this strategy at the time. And back then, you know, banks were a lot more forgiving in the way that you could structure things. I mean, right. I had Bank of America at the time. I was able to use them. I got a $10,000 HELOC, uh, H-E-L-O-C, home equity line of credit. And I was able to pay down my condominium very quickly. I didn't pay it off because I ended up having to move, but I paid a huge chunk of interest off. And then Natalie and I... Principal. Principal. And, principal. Right. And then Natalie and I jointly have now done this a couple of times on a couple of different properties. In fact, I think it's why this is special right now because we are in the mountains. We're actually on a little family vacation. Mm -hmm. But this is our, our home away from home up in the mountains. And uh, we're at a lake. And well, it was the first home we purchased as a, as a couple and we bought it right after we got married. And so we always thought that we were gonna stay in Manhattan and then have this house as like our home home away from Manhattan. We just always have a small apartment and then we would have this as our, as our house. So we had committed to this mortgage very early on in our marriage, but then our son started to crawl. We were living in a small New York City apartment. We said, oh gosh, we need to get out of here. And we realized we could buy a home in the suburbs for the same we were paying in rent in Manhattan which is really pathetic, but those are the going rates. It was like so, $3,800 a 3, month was dollars our rent in Manhattan. A, for and a one-bedroom apartment. And that didn't even include our parking space. Remember in the parking garage? It was an what, additional right? We didn't even have a car. It was $500 a month for the parking space. So we decided, okay, we need a car in order to get to this house in the mountains. So we had to buy a house, and then we had to buy rent for the car. So um, not only then did we have the car payment, but we also had the rent for the car. The as car well. payment was high. Um, sorry, the car payment was two eighty a month. Right. The the parking for the car was much cheaper. So you know, five hundred a month we, was what much more, more expensive, expensive, right? So we had this mortgage. We were comfortable with it. But then we bought a house in the suburbs of New Jersey so that we could be close to our jobs. So then we had two mortgages and two houses. We never intended for that to be the way you know, that we were living. And so then we said, okay, how can we really chip it down? Wouldn't it be great to only have one mortgage? And so we used this strategy to get rid of the mortgage here in the mountains. And then we had one mortgage and then we said, well, wouldn't it be great to have zero mortgages? So now that's our goal is going towards having no mortgages. Now we're not talking about mortgages on our investment properties. We've talked about mortgages on portfolio loans and mortgages on other investments, that's that's separate. And we, we actually do work to pay down principal on those loans, but and we're it, talking about- the strategy about would work on definitely. investment. Because I actually, since we've launched the book and pre-ordered, a lot of people have asked me, would this work on investment properties? Absolutely. In fact, it would work on paying off a boat. It right. would work on paying off your credit cards. So yes, but we're focused in this book primarily on 
uh, paying off your primary mortgage. Right, and we talk in the book about, yeah, credit card debt, auto debt, student debt, right? Because what we're trying to get you to do is use the equity that you have in your home right now, evaluate how much you can get out of it, and then use that as cash to then pay down the debt service that you've got right now because we wanna teach you what your mortgage is made of. We go through sort of the anatomy of a mortgage, like what is it in there that all your dollars are going towards taxes, insurance, fees, principal, interest, all of that stuff, so that once you understand that, you can start then diving in to figure out how to work it to your advantage, because otherwise, most of the time when you sign for a mortgage, you're signing such a deep stack of papers that you probably miss the one page that should blow your mind that you really should see is, okay, you're borrowing $300,000 for the house, and because you're paying an amortized loan of 4% over 30 years, you will actually, out of pocket, by the time this loan is paid off, pay like $650,000 or something. It's, like, it's more than double what you think you're paying for your house. It is a ridiculous number, and I think what's scary, most people don't you know think about, but they end up having the, they get that big stack. I don't know if they still do it, but it's, uh, in your mortgage, it's like a big stapled stack of your amortization schedule. And you can see yeah. how much you just page through this thing. And the, it's up to the mortgage lender when they're sitting there at the closing table, they have to show it to you. They make you page through it so that you know what you're getting into. So you page through this thing and you're like, holy smokes, over 30 years, I'm paying almost double or triple what right. I'm buying the house for. And so many of us just choose the mortgage that we think we can afford every month out of our budget. And you know, that's just, it's an expensive mistake to not be looking at the fact that you're, you can swing it, you can pay this every month, but you're paying the bank more than you're actually paying to own that asset. Right, and so if you're watching the video version of this, I wanna apologize because um, we're in the mountains. I'm, I've got sort of mountain mountain facial hair at the moment right, and I've been swatting hair. away swatting away mosquitoes now I lit a fire to keep the mosquitoes off my wife because she gets bit like crazy and I don't but and he gets poison ivy so I get poison I ivy like crazy which happens if the wind blows in my direction so I lit a fire behind us down in the uh, in the bonfire pit <laughs> it's like a little gnat that wants to bite and you so yeah it, yeah <laughs> we're swatting away mosquitoes right now um, so no we're super excited about it so the book is called how to pay off your mortgage in five years it's on Amazon right now it's uh, it's it's a quick read I mean it's you know it's like 40 pages it's, it's a short book it's you know it's cheap but we don't waste any time like we didn't waste a hundred pages on filler anecdotes from people we wanted to get right to the heart of the matter and cut right to the chase so Unlike these other books that sort of promise the world, we even say this in the introduction, and don't deliver, we're in this book give you an absolute blueprint to walk you through step by step how to do this. Um, so you know exactly how this looks. We've got three kids and we're able to do this. So insert your own scenario here, this is what we do. So you wanna kinda, let's go through the, bro the book in broad strokes. Obviously we want you to read the book cause it's gonna detail, we've got spreadsheets in there, it's gonna deep dive all of these strategies, but just sort right. of at a high level. Um, you know, th there are plenty through. of people that are going to come to us and say, well, this, this doesn't work because I have this situation or this situation. And I understand that. It's, it's, finance is not one size fits all. But if someone reads this book, I think it will change their way of thinking about their financial products and try to figure out ways around it. So even if it's not just I use this home equity line of credit to pay down this mortgage, you can maybe find a personal line of credit to pay down some other type of debt, right? The, the whole point, the big enchilada is be better at evaluating your financial products so that your money you can keep. Right, and also too, you might not even have a mortgage yet, but whoa to then you. Then why are you reading this book? No, but no good on you for understanding what goes into something like this before you get into it, you know, before you jump into the deep end of the pool, now you know. So yes, you may take on that mortgage, but you're taking on that mortgage with the knowledge that you're gonna be able to pay it off in five years. So you could be smiling across the closing desk to the person that thinks you're gonna be paying this off right. in 30 years. You can just sort of be snickering to yourself thinking, I know something you don't. 
because right. this thing is going to be paid off in five years. When they hand you that, like, actually, you're going to pay 600 something thousand, you can be like, no, I'm not. Right. And you'll see. So let's dive into some of the mechanics of a mortgage. It's important we start off the book talking about what goes into a mortgage. And the main thing we want you to take away from this is that principal, principal, principal balance of what you're paying on your mortgage, right? If, you, if you're buying a $400,000 home, that's the principal balance of your home is $400,000. The interest is on top of that over the years. You may end up paying $800,000 for that same home over 30 years. Depending on the type of mortgage, right? Right, so we want you to understand like you know, what is the principal? What are some fees that might also go inside of your mortgage that you may see why you're paying so much per month? And then what is the interest payment per month? Um, and then, you know, there's some other bits and bobs that may go into a mortgage, but once you understand that, then you can watch your statement every month and see like how much is my principal going down. A lot of people find that rather depressing because every month you put a big chunk of your paycheck into your mortgage, but you get so little out of it in terms of equity. Right. So equity, of course, is what we all want in our properties eventually, right? If you follow this podcast for any length of time, you know that there are three stages of real estate investing, buy, own, and cash flow. When you buy properties, you don't necessarily have a ton of equity in those properties. At a certain point, you own them, which gives you full equity in those properties, and then you get to experience the full cash flow of those properties. So the same principle really applies for your own primary residence as well, right? If you buy a $400,000 home and you've got 100% financing. You don't own any of it, you don't, actually. Yeah, you don't have anything in that house, right? right. Maybe with 20% down, you own some equity in that home. Now, that's the key, right? What equity do you have to work with in order to go back to your local bank and ask for a HELOC? Now, there are two types of home equity loans. There's a home equity loan, as we've talked about here on the podcast, recently, right? I did a whole episode on the difference between a home equity loan and a home equity line of credit. The home equity loan is the loan that they write you a check. Let's say you have $40,000 in equity in your home. They write you a check for $40,000. You don't want that. That's nice. Because then you have a full $40,000 new lien on your house. It actually is recorded with the county because if you were to like move to Mozambique tomorrow and say I'm not going to pay on my bills, they'd have to sell it at an auction and then the city would get paid first because the government always takes its cut first in back taxes. Then the bank would get paid back and then now this home equity loan would get paid back whatever is left over. Right. So the home equity loan, it's nice, but you don't want it for this because now you have a $40,000 debt and you can only it's you can't rinse and repeat. The beauty of a HELOC is it's a line of credit like a credit card. You get a $40,000 line of credit, you start with a zero balance, and then we're gonna work with that HELOC in order to, to pay down our primary mortgage. And we go over all the mechanics, and we're not gonna do it here on the podcast, in the book, because there's a lot of little nuances about how to set it up with your bank, and, and those also types the sun's of things. Going down. But, <laughs> but generally we wanna say, go for the HELOC, not the home equity loan. Two different animals, the HELOC is way better. Now, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're trading interest for time. Do you wanna explain this piece of it and why a HELOC is different than your amortized mortgage that you have right. on your home? Okay, so some people will say to me, well, why don't I just make one extra payment per year or make one big principal payment per year, which is great. It's a great strategy, and in the end, it may shake out to being very similar, but the reason we, we go with this with this strategy is because it forces you to put big chunks of money into your mortgage. Now your mortgage is made up of, again, principal and interest. That interest, it's amortized, meaning that it will take more money from you based on the amount of interest and the amount of time you have left on that loan, right? So when you make a big principal payment, say $5,000, you'll see that the amount of interest that you're gonna pay over the life of the loan gets slashed considerably, but also the number of payments you have now gets slashed considerably because that's what amortization is. Now amortization is a complicated calculation, but what you just have to know is that your main enemies in your mortgage are interest and time. So if you can take big whacks at your mortgage, you're gonna save so much in interest and time, more than you would if you just say, kind of give another little bowl full of money, right? Right, right, and so when we've done this, 
what we love to do is Natalie has set up, in fact, in the book we give away the amateurization calculator spreadsheet. So download the book because we have a link right there. You can download the free, the free calculator and it shows you how this works. And that's why it's so beautiful to watch because when you make one of these payments um, towards the principal balance from your HELOC, it's amazing to watch the months change, right? So maybe you owe, what is it, maybe 220 months? I don't know, how, how many months are in? Oh, let's see. Oh, how many months are in 30 years? And I don't, know. Sort of, I don't 12 do times it. 30. Yeah. So, okay. You're the math genius. Yeah, it's it's like 300 and some some odd pay, um, payment. Or Nevertheless, f- it's beautiful to watch in this calculator to watch. Suddenly, we've ch- chopped like seven or eight months right. of payments. And this is right actually in. something we do all the time when I'll say, okay, we've saved this $5,000, $10,000. Clayton, come to my office because I keep the spreadsheet there, um, you know, and I don't want to just put in that thing and see, put in the, you know, deposit and see the interest shrink on my own because it's not my accomplishment by myself and I'm going to do a little dance in my chair and no one's there to watch. So he comes and watches it and he's like, yeah, and we're like, High fiving mm-hmm. because that feels amazing because it usually means that the amount of interest that we're scheduled to pay over our lifetime that will have come out of our pockets has shrunk so much with just, I mean, you, you'll see it with just a $5,000 principal payment, with just even a $1,000 principal payment. And it becomes so addicting that you're just going to want to take like a, like a machete. Right, I'm just like you. start like whacking away at it, like you're in the jungle. It's it's very satisfying. So yeah, in, in the book we show you an example of this amateurization calendar, and it's amazing to see how much over the course of a loan you're going to pay in interest and how much you'd save. So, um, you know, it's usually like you know 15 pages long when you get that amateurization schedule from your bank when you're at the closing table. So to slash that is gonna be fantastic. But then you have to take the responsibility to keep your own amateurization schedule because you can't just like take what the bank gives you and then write in like, oh, this month on payment number 13, I I put more. That's not gonna change the numbers on the paper, right? You've gotta keep that live. So you're keeping track of what you have paid for and what you've paid down um, because it's too complicated. I, I didn't really know this um, before we started doing this, and I thought, well, maybe online I can go to Bankrate. And you can sort of, you can say, you know, I have this loan, it started on this date, and it's for these many months, and it's for this interest rate, and I put this much more towards principal. But then you can't account for that maybe six months later you put this much more towards principal, and then six months later you did the same thing. Um, so you have to track this yourself, and, and the best way I've found to do that is an Excel spreadsheet because Excel can do amortization really well in a way that like an online software as a service cannot. Right. So bottom line is we care much less about the monthly payment and how much you know that payment is than we care about the principal pay down of that. So and it also changes how your taxes and insurance will change your monthly payment. Do you want to talk about this? because we wrote this out in the book as well, how taxes and insurance change your monthly payments. Um, Right, again, this goes into the anatomy of your mortgage. So you may have had to bundle a tax and insurance payment into your mortgage. Sometimes the bank requires that. If they don't require it, you really shouldn't do it because they pad that account and then you're just letting more money come out of your paycheck every month in order for the bank to keep a certain amount of money in escrow. Whereas you could be keeping that in some kind of interest bearing account do more with that money and then make those payments on your own and then maybe you'll have something left over to put to principal. Meanwhile, that money is at work for the bank, not you. So yes, we have a a section about that as well. So another thing we want to say, obviously we're talking about playing interest like a master and that's really what this whole this whole strategy does is you, you know playing playing the interest card, that's where the HELOC comes in. So if you have that $40,000 HELOC, you want to put that Mm -hmm. on your $150,000 that you still owe the bank. All of that goes towards principal, right? So that $40,000 HELOC, funnel that right to your principal balance. You owe $150,000. Guess what? Now you owe $110,000. And then because you're making these small payments per month back to your HELOC, which we go over in the book on how to do that, then it never really accrues the interest that you think it will by having those multiple small payments per month coming out of your paycheck, which we again talk about in the book. And you're trading that system, those two types of interest, those two types of bank products that Natalie talks about all the time, one for the other. 
And right. in this scenario, one is better than the other for paying all of this back. So Now sometimes, you know, we have people say, well, what about just you have the introductory HELOC rate, which is awesome, but when it adjusts to a market rate, then what? Well, then you've got more equity in your home and you go shopping for a new one. Sometimes your bank will let you re-up it. Sometimes they'll say, no, we're not gonna do that. You're gonna, you know, these are the rates we offer. That's fine there. You know, if you have good credit, and you've been making those payments and now you're an awesome real estate investor too and you have more equity in that home and you know hopefully market conditions are fairly stable uh, then you can take that equity that belongs to you and shop it to another bank because another bank believe me wants to lend you on that money right and that's what we recently had to do right our HELOC went from an introductory rate of 1.9 percent with a local bank that we used and it jumped up to 4.25 yeah and, and so I said homie don't play that so we went shopping and yeah. you know what <laughs> we're gonna get another one that's gonna give us another either greater rate or something but we're gonna find and that's why we talk about in the book how to shop local a lot of um, I spoke to an investor today that said she had done this exact same strategy she got a HELOC she's paying paying off their principal balance I love that she's also buying rental properties with her HELOC and I said, did you buy a local HELOC? Did you get use a local bank? She said, actually, we worked with a large national bank with a local branch, but they were they were great. I said, oh, good for you. Typically, a local... A lot of times, it just comes down to, like, personal contact. Although, I mean, if you've never done this before and you have good credit, you, you might you, you can search around on bankrate.com and see what comes up. It doesn't hurt to do that for sure. So the bottom line on how this all comes together, and again, we go over the mechanics in the book, but how to pay off your HELOC, and that's the your, that's the question I'm sure many of you are asking, well, how do we pay off the HELOC? And I've already mentioned a little bit, which is that you're setting up your HELOC like, a, it, it is a bank account. They give you a debit card typically, they'll give you checks mm -hmm. typically, or you have to request those. And you want to then, if you get a direct deposit from your employer every week, right, you probably get a direct deposit from your boss or maybe from your rental investments. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. Or you get rental income from your rental investments. Structure it so that those deposits go into the HELOC account. Now you're saying, how is that possible? Well, you have a routing number, you have an account number, and typically, a lot of times, the banks might not even know that you can do this. Ours so, didn't. Ours didn't, right? So what happened was I structured my direct deposit with my employer so that the direct deposit was going into the HELOC account. Well, guess what? It worked. And the bank actually called me and said, uh, we just got a deposit into your home equity line of credit. Did you want that there? And I said, yes, I did. And I said, okay, great. So every time I get paid, it goes into the HELOC. Why is that important? Because you wanna treat the HELOC like a checking account. But one thing we had to learn the hard way is that we started that before we had actually taken any money out of the HELOC. So the HELOC was worth... I think, at zero. It was at zero dollars. Right. And so, but it was worth, I want to say that one was... 70 something? 80? I thought 80, that was more. Yeah, okay. 80,000 dollars. And then, you know, we tried to put money in it and they're like, you don't owe us anything. You can't increase the value of it. So then all of a sudden we it's couldn't like, go to like 82, 82 or yeah. whatever. They said, you have to spend this money in order to pay it back. So then I had to quickly like make a payment on the house. Um, in order to have some debt to put that paycheck in. So you can't let it hit zero and then keep trying to get your money there that your company will just get your paycheck bounced back and that's bad news. So so, so, so why, why this works is, right, let's say you make $2,000 every two weeks, right, bi-weekly. So every two weeks you make $2,000 from your job. We're just hypothetically here. The reason that this works is because Instead of, you know, at the end of your paycheck, at the end of your two weeks, typically you're probably going to have a few hundred bucks still left in your account, right? And maybe Hopefully. not. Hopefully. Hopefully. Maybe not. Maybe you're at zero, right? You've paid all your bills and you're at zero dollars and you're like, oh, thank God I'm getting paid again. Typically, most people have 30, 50, 100, 200 dollars lingering in their account, I would think, right? For most people. Now, instead of that just sitting in a random checking account, that extra hundred, two hundred dollars that's sitting in that account is now sitting in your HELOC account. And what is special about that is that you're not using it. So what is it doing? It's paying back your HELOC, which you just used to pay your primary mortgage. It's on like your house. filling that cup right back up. Right. So by making these small micro payments from your employer or any deposit strategy that you have every month or every few weeks, the interest never really gets a chance to accrue.
because it's like a credit card. And when you make small payments towards a credit card multiple times a month, that interest resets itself. It's totally different than your amortization schedule of your primary mortgage, and that's the beauty of this strategy. So that is it in a nutshell. I mean, it doesn't get any crazier than that, but we go over again some of these mechanics and how to take in some of these variables in the book and explain how to put it all together as one. And we also have some great spreadsheets that Natalie's built so you can track all of this and some tools and tips, and they're all free uh, in the book. So check it out. Yeah. So. Is this for any weekend warrior who just secures a mortgage? Yes. No. <laughs> well, no, clearly not. This is for well, people who Well, I mean, what do you mean are... by weekend warrior? If they're committed to paying off their mortgage, if they're... Right. These are people who are going to be organized. Okay. Be disciplined. I mean, if you have read through this book, you are those things, right? But if you're, you... you're just being like, if you're thinking... I don't have I don't have the organizational skills is that what you're saying like if someone because it's it's a little complicated to grasp and if you don't have the discipline then to say you know budget so that you have a little bit extra in your in your monthly paycheck in order to pay back your home equity line of credit um, yeah so are you it, saying it that discipline. Are, you, are you saying that weekend warriors aren't disciplined I guess I use the I use the phrase wrong it, it like it's not just for, uh, how would you put it then? It's not just for anyone who, like... Well, I would say it's not for the disorganized person. It's, it's not, not for the, the disorganized or the undisciplined. It's for the we, organized I mean, let's be and honest. the disciplined. We have people in our lives who are like, Natalie, I'm not doing that. Right. Come on. Natalie, I'm not doing that. Or Clayton, I'm not, come on. You guys are crazy. You guys yeah. are, you know, fine, fine. Our house will be paid off while, while you're calling us crazy. Right. Okay. But I'm not competing with strangers, but um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> I'm saying these people are in our lives. Right. Yeah. We know these people. Okay. I'm not going to name names. All right. Right. Um, what I'm trying to say is, this is a strategy that takes some organization, some planning, some execution, and some discipline. And I mean, I believe that if you're the kind of person to download this podcast, you've already self-selected into yeah. that category. Um, but again, I, you know, I wouldn't just like tell anyone, you know, everyone can do this. But you know, one of the the things that when I heard someone once describing this strategy, um, they used this quote from Einstein, it's Einstein, right? Is that interest, mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, those who understand it, make it, and those who don't, pay it. That's an eloquent way of summarizing, I, I'm paraphrasing from Einstein. Um, Einstein was a weekend warrior. So, I don't think so. <laughs> so disorganized. Is that good? Uh, yeah. Can you say that again? Just hit that point home because I feel right. like I stumbled all over it. No, exactly. I mean, interest, those who understand interest uh, make, it. make it. Those who don't end up paying it and they pay it their whole lives, right? You know, and that's why the rich get richer because they're the ones who are loaning money out. Lenders are always the one who are the master. And those who are paying interest, those who are paying mortgages, those who are borrowing money are always going to be the slave. That's just the way it is in the financial the financial world, in the financial matrix. Right. So, so this is, you know, for you to, yes, the bank took a risk. They lent you some money that they may not give back or that, that they may not get back so that you get to live in this mountain house. Right. We appreciate that. But we don't need to pay it forever. We can get the money back to the bank so that we can stop paying them for that money. That's, I mean, that's it. We agreed to borrow from you $200,000 so we can live in this house. And the quicker we pay you back that $200,000, the less time we have to pay you for that loan. That's, that's just all that there is to it. Yeah. So please go check out the book. We hope you will uh, leave us a kind review. We worked hard on it. It's a short read. It's a fast read. We hopefully didn't put any fluff in there. We wanted to get right to the heart of the matter. So just go to Amazon, look for it. We've got a paperback version also in case you don't have a Kindle or an iPad to read it on. So the paperback version is also uh, now available as well. Um, but the digital... We only accept five-star reviews. Just yeah, like on iTunes. Yeah, please. Anything less than that review. and we will... Slap you silly. No, we've got a lot of very kind reviews on there so far. So please, uh, if you'd be so kind as to leave us a kind review, we would really appreciate it. So, I have a mosquito in my so there's mosquitoes landing on my <laughs> wife. The fire must be out. 
and that's going to be a wrap for today's show. So thanks so much for checking us out. If you want to visit our website also, head on over to morrisinvest.com and check out all of the great resources we have over there as well. Links to the book and everything will be there as well. So check it out. The book is called How to Pay Off Your Mortgage in Five Years Using the Secret Weapon that Banks Don't Want You to Know About to Slash Your Mortgage. So check it out, everyone. We'll see you next time on the Investing in Real Estate show. Now go out there, take action, become a real estate investor, and pay off your mortgage fast. Much love to you all. Bye-bye.